Hey friends! Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be doing my September slash fall TBR. So it's officially fall in my mind, which means now it's officially for a time for me to create my fall TBR and also start thinking about what I'm going to be reading in September. I know it's been a minute since I posted a TBR video and I am a little bit in a more stable living situation for right now which means I'm hoping that I can film more sit down videos as time goes on. We'll see. Also starting back to work uh, in September so we'll see how that affects my mental capacity. Something that I've been doing um, this summer that I haven't really mentioned is that I started doing, like I've still been doing my seasonal TBRs instead of doing my prompt jar with those because I packed it up um, I've been doing like a bingo board essentially just to make it a little bit more fun and do something different and so I've been using my TBRs each month to cross out the bingo board for the season so we're just going with that um, I'll put a picture of my bingo board up here I came up with these prompts just like googled and stuff that I've been wanting to try and read um, but just haven't gotten around to it and I felt like some of these prompts were just perfect for fall in general so starting from like the top row we have um, a cozy read so uh, either a cozy read a cozy mystery cozy fantasy cozy romance cozy fiction whatever just a cozy read is best for that prompt um, next is a fantasy written by a POC author, so any fantasy that's written by a person of color. Um, I have a long list of ones that I've been trying to get to, so I felt like this was a perfect prompt to do for this season, especially because it's fall. Fall leads to kind of, gives me like a fantasy vibe. I'm, I've been in my fantasy bag all year, but just continuing that into fall, I guess. Next is a book published this fall, so a book published this year, but within the fall season. So I would say maybe like end of August to beginning of November. If there's a um, book that's published within that time frame, it fits the prompt. Um, and I have a couple books that I've been looking forward to coming out this, this fall, so that's why I put it down there. Um, next we have, next row is a middle grade. I'm still trying to get back get into middle grade and so um, I have a few that I've been wanting to try out so I figured this prompt would be a fun one to throw in. Next we have a free choice so it could just be a mood read, something you've been trying to get to for a while, a sequel, blah blah blah. So it's just free choice. Next is a bookseller's pick. So for that one um, I you don't actually have to talk to people because I don't like talking to people but I thought it would be fun to like I haven't been book shopping a lot this year, which is pretty responsible of me for the most part, and I'm kind of shocked I've lasted this long. But I think at some point this fall I'll probably go book shopping or something like that. And you know how in Barnes & Noble or maybe one of the other bookstores, maybe an independent bookstore, they'll usually have little prompt cards with certain books? Um, I was going to count those specifically. like. Oh, if a bookseller is recommending this book with a prompt card, then I'm going to count that as a bookseller pick. Or if you just want to walk in and talk to a bookseller and be like, recommend me a book, you could also do that. Or, knowing the book community is vast, full of booksellers, if you just message a bookseller on the internet that you know, don't just ma don't message a random stranger, but someone that, like, is a bookseller, then I would count that too and honestly actually if you want to stretch this because I'm a big believer of stretching prompts to the point of no return um if technically as a book promoter like we promote books we talk about books we are technically selling books to people in a way so if you just want to watch a video of somebody talking about a book that they loved that counts too I'm gonna stretch it so whatever whatever you want to do but a book sellers pick so then the last row is um, an ebook. So for that one, I am um, trying to get back into my ebook bag. I've 
been a longtime ebook reader. Kindle Unlimited has uh, my wallet secured in their clutches. And it's been that way for a very long time but this year I found myself getting away from that like I really just have not been picking up my Kindle I haven't been picking up ebooks anything like that and I want to get back into it because I used to love them they were a handy dandy easy way to pick up a book um, in between big books I was reading or in between physical books or audiobooks I was reading so I just want to get back into my ebook bag and I felt like this was a perfect way to do it Next is a friend pick slash buddy read, so either you could have a friend pick a book for you if you want to do like a friend picks my TBR, if you want to do a friend reading a friend's favorites, if you want to do whatever, that what counts, and then a buddy read, so like, um, you know what those are, if you want to read the same book as somebody, whether they know it or not, it's a buddy read, so counts and I have a few buddy reads um, happening in September so I felt like this was again a perfect prompt and the last prompt for the Spiegel board is a manga again I've been wanting to I'm usually in my manga bag but there are actually some really good animes coming out this fall and so I want to try out the manga before I pick up the anime um, or start the anime so I want to do that um, so yeah this is my bingo board this is what I'm gonna be kind of working on this fall and all that to say, I'm going to jump into my September TBR. Um, so I have a couple books that I've been wanting to get to. And I went ahead and just drew them on my TBR list. And then um, I have a couple buddy reads as well. And maybe some rereads. Don't know yet. But we're just going to get down to it. Okay, so the first book I have on my list is The Jassad Error by Sarah Hashim. Hashem. This looked really appealing to me. It sounded very interesting and I think I saw somebody say that if you liked um, Fourth Wing, which I know it's so polarizing, some people love it, some people hate it, but they said this book was really good too. It's like a similar vibe. I was intrigued but then I read the syn I actually read the synopsis and the synopsis actually sounded really interesting and sounded like it was up my alley. So this is what the synopsis is. So 10 years ago the kingdom of Jassad burned. Its magic outlawed its royal family murdered down to the last child. At least that's what Sylvia wants people to believe. The lost heir of Jassad, Sylvia, never wants to be found. She can't think about how Nizal's armies laid waste to her kingdom and continue to hunt its people. Not if she wants to stay alive. But when Aaron, that Nizal heir, tracks a group of Jasadi rebels to her village, staying one step ahead of death gets trickier. In a moment of anger, Sylvia's magic is exposed, capturing Aaron's attention. Now to save her life, Sylvia will have to make a deal with her greatest enemy. If she helps him lure the rebels, she'll escape persecution. A deadly game begins. Sylvia can't let Aaron discover her identity, even as hatred shifts into something more. Soon, Sylvia will have to choose between the life she wants and the one she left behind. The scorched kingdom is rising, and it needs a queen. In this Egyptian-inspired debut fantasy, a fugitive queen strikes a deadly bargain with her greatest enemy and finds herself embroiled in a complex game that could resurrect her scorched kingdom or leave it in ashes forever. If you know me, you know I am a big fan of colonized empires coming back and or like colonized people coming back and like revenging the colonizers. I'm a big fan of it. Ember in the Ashes, that was my bag. I was there. I was here for it. I was gonna wait. Like I wasn't gonna just buy it or anything. And it came in my Illumicrate box and I just felt like that was a sign that I need to read this book. So I went ahead and got the audiobook, so I'm going to go ahead and read that in September. Alright, so then next, um, y'all know I read A Court of Thorns and Roses in April or May or March, one of those months. So, I'm finally going to move on and read A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. Y'all, I'm really hesitant about this book. I just don't know if I'm going to like this series. But I'm committed to knowing all the things in her world. So that way I'm prepared for the third book in Crescent City. Especially because this series seems to be the most relevant at the moment. So, I'm committed. I'm going to read it. And we're going to go from there. 
I just, I feel like Feyre is not going to get any better for me. And I feel so bad saying that. But we're just, we're going with it. The next book I want to read is Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shannon McGuire. So this is the third book in the Wayward Children series. And I love this series. I've loved the first two books and I've been wanting to continue. So I figured it was time to throw in the third book. It's short. It's not long. It's not a long book at all. These essentially are a series of novellas. If we're completely being honest, or a series of short-ish stories that could, but like they correspond and relate to the same world and same characters and everything. So I'm just really excited. I have loved the characters so far. Again, love the world building. The next book I'm going to read is A Romance and it's In the Weeds by BK Borison. So I absolutely loved Love Light Farms. It was such a cute story. It was like very simple, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't overly complex, wasn't overly dramatic. And I really enjoyed that. And it was like a really good palette cleanser in a way. So I want to continue in that in that series that she has of companion novels and I want to move on to the next book which is in the weeds and this follows two people that you meet in the first book Evelyn and I think the other guy's name is Beckett so I'm gonna read the synopsis really quickly and then we can go from there so Evelyn St. James isn't this kind of woman you forget Beckett Porter certainly hasn't one incredible weekend in Maine and he's officially a man distracted he's not unfamiliar with hot and heavy flings he knows how it goes, but Evie wove some sort of magical for him during their tumble in the sheets. He can't stop thinking about her laugh, her hand pressed flat against his chest, her smiling mouth at his neck, also her eyes and her legs. So when she suddenly appears on his farm as part of a social media contest, he is confused. He had no idea that the sweet and sexy woman he met at a bar is actually a global phenomenon, social media influencer Evelyn St. James. When she dis disappears again, Beckett resolves to finally forget her and move on. But Evelyn St. James has a problem. Feeling disconnected from her work and increasingly unhappy, she's trying to find her way back to something real. She returns to the last place she was happy, Love Light Farms. And the tiny town of Inglewood is absolutely nothing to do with the heart farmer, hot farmer she spent two incredible nights with. Nothing at all. So this sounds really cute. It's like a second chance romance. Um, and honestly, like, I loved the world building within the first book. Like, you meet this town and it's a town full of, like, very intense people. But they're, like, ready to go to back for, bat for each other at any moment and so I'm excited to get back into it and read this story and these characters because actually Beckett was really a really like adorable person in the first book so I'm excited to like get his main story and his point of view majority of the book if that makes sense so looking forward to that and then the last book I am um going to be officially trying to read is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. So I've been, like, I've known everybody's loved this series for a really long time, but, like, all this kind of stuff. And Monet finally read the first book, or maybe she finished the series. I can't remember. She read it, and she really loved it. And so that was my cue to try it out, because mm, we kind of have similar tastes sometimes. We also just have, like, differing opinions on characters in general. So I was like, if Monet and I think Cell loved it too. So Cell is usually also my meter. So if Monet and Cell both pretty much enjoyed it, I'm hoping that I will think the same. I'm gonna read the synopsis for you because I've actually never read the synopsis of this book. So this will be a good thing to do. So Nari never has never believed in magic. Certainly she has power. On the streets of 18th century Cairo, she's a con woman of unsurpassed talent. But she knows better than anyone that the trade she uses to get by palm readings, czars, healings, are all tricks, sleights of hand, learned skills. It means the, to the delightful end of swindling Ottoman nobles. But when Nari accidentally summons an equally sly, darkly mysterious jinn warrior to her side during one of her cons, she's forced to accept that, that the magical world she thought only existed in childhood stories is real for the warrior tells her a new tale across hot windswept sands teeming with creatures of fire and rivers where the mythical marid sleep 
past ruins of once magnificent human metropolises and mountains where the circling hawks are not what they seem lies Devabad, the legendary city of brass, a city to which Nari is irrevocably bound. In that city, behind gilded brass walls laced with enchantments, behind the six gates of the six jinn tribes, old resentments are simmering. And when Nari decides to enter this world, she learns that true power is fierce and brutal. That magic cannot shield her from the dangerous web of court politics. That even the cleverest of schemes can have deadly consequences. After all, there is a reason they say to be careful what you wish for. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. My buzzword challenge, the buzzword challenge for this month is game related. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think I have a book picked out for that one yet. So, that's going to be a to-be-continued to my wrap-up. And then for extra books this month, I um, have three buddy reads planned. And then <laughs> a reread planned. Actually, I think I might have four buddy reads planned. So, we're going to try this out. <laughs> Alright, so with Ray, we're going to be reading The Gilded Ones. For, with Ashley and Robin, we're going to be reading The Diviners. Um, with Monet and Ray, I'm going to be reading Fireborn 2, which is, what is that? Fire Song? <laughs> it's Flamefall. I don't know where I got Fire Song from. I'm going to be rereading Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armitrow. It's the second, no, it's the third book in the Foam Blooded Ash series that I'm rereading through. And then I, I, I DNF'd Serpent's Curse at the beginning of the year, but I'm contemplating trying to reread it again and get through it. So that's a potential reread. Those are my September reads. I know it seems like a lot, but I've been actually doing pretty good with keeping up with my like TBRs and stuff the past, this past m month or so. So I am hoping to, um, Maybe plan well and hope for the best um, and go from there. So hopefully you all like this video. Thank you for watching if you watched this far. Um, if you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section. Let me know some exciting books you're going to be trying to read this fall or maybe books that you're anticipating coming out this fall. Also, let me know that. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button down below. Um, honestly, I know my hi hiatus has kind of done some damage, but I'm hoping that I can get back into it and really um, get back to maybe where I was before I took my hi hiatus. <laughs> we'll see. But you guys are all some lives in a world full of weeds.